So performance indicators, what are they? Do people have people in your organization? Do you identify performance indicators? Yeah. So they help you measure your organization against targets which you have set. So for instance, we are going to have 100% of all care plans completed within the 28 days as per the regulation. That could be a performance indicator. We are going to have all our assessments completed within the seven days in residential services. Okay? How many of them? Our benchmark is we want 100%. Okay? So you're monitoring that every month. You're collecting that data. You're either going to collect it manually if you all are on paper versions or if you have an electronic version, a uh, health record, you can pull that data if it allows you to do it. That is one, um, that is one way uh, you're going to collect, uh, collect the data or manually. At the end of the day, you're going to be looking at, you're going to decide on how often you're going to collect that data. Is it going to be monthly? Is it going to be quarterly? What is the data? How are you going to collect it? Who's going to analyze it? And what are we going to do if we're not reaching the target that we're reaching? How are we going to improve it? So that's what we want to do. And um, again, what they do, the advantages of them, they provide management of staff with the data and information required to manage and improve the care services. They're going to help you <coughs> identify within your service every year you decide on what your uh, key performance indicators are. They can be both clinical and they can be non-clinical. They can be business related and they can be clinical. Um, so they help you see where you're performing and where, they, where you're not performing and where improvements might be made. So they help you with, um, you can help with, you know, with your annual review, you can include your key performance indicators and your trending within that for the organization. So you can explain, you can sing your song to HICWA of how you've improved and how you continuously improve and how you continuously <coughs> achieve your benchmark um, against other organizing. So here we go, our key performance indicators. So measures towards achieving local or corporate quality and safety risk management objectives and targets to promote accountability of service providers to residents. So we're monitoring, we're showing them that yes, we want to improve our service. We expect our staff and everybody that provides a service to you to be benchmarked internationally or nationally. For example, we expect that there is an 85% compliance on hand hygiene within our organization. Ooh, that's very difficult. <laughs> uh, but we expect that. Um, so that's what key performance indicators are doing. Um, they promote uh, accountability as we said that. Compare performance to identify opportunities for improvement, I've said that, and promote service improvements by publicizing performance levels. I don't think that, do any of you publicize key performance indicators? It's very much, it might be as, um, uh, you know, in your annual review if you have them, that's going to be public if you're giving it to the residents and the families. Um, I know that a lot of acute services have to, they put their uh, annual reviews up on uh, online so that they're, they're, they're publicizing their performance levels. Okay, so again, again, examples, and this would be for disability and for residential, about what uh, types of key performance indicators you can be identified. So assessments, I said that already, invasive procedures antibiotic and other medication use. Again, you can bring that in through the new standards for infection prevention and control, looking at how many residents have been vaccinated against the flu. How many staff have been vaccinated against the flu? What is the uptake? What are we trying to benchmark against? Use of blood products, and, uh, use of blood and blood pro products might not be relevant in, uh, in, either, in any of your services. Um, the availability, content, and use of resident records, pain management, how many pain assessments have been completed after the administration of PRN and analgesia? 
Okay, and the use of um, it, it sedation. Okay, again, some I said that you can have some clinical, some uh, gover uh, governance, and managerial work. So again, the procurement of supplies, uh, reporting of activities uh, as re required by the laws and regulations, risk management. So you can bring them in. Utilization, bed utilization. That's a good one. I'm sure you all know about bed utilization. Uh, financial management, um, staff expecti uh, uh, expectations and satisfaction. Does everybody do a staff satisfaction survey? Yeah, yeah you do? Quarterly. Quarterly. The hardest thing about staff uh, surveys is actually actioning what has been said to you, isn't it? <laughs> okay, and staff retention and turnover. And as we said, it could be identified during a HIPAA report that your staffing levels and the turnover was high. What are you going to monitor? There, you know, how are you going to monitor this moving forward? Are you going to look at your staff turnover on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, or on a yearly basis? 